have one small but mighty choir. Seriously. But I will tell you that they're not opposed to growing. So, if you would like to offer your voice in praise, they are very welcome to welcome you into the choir. They are a welcoming group. Let's see. Yeah, it's lonely back here, so if you have a singing voice, or even if you just like to sing, come and join them. Now let's join in a moment of prayer. Gracious God, this is already a tough day. We know that you are already with us, that your presence is already carrying Jerry to the hospital. But Lord God, we ask that you be with us. We ask that you bless us with your Holy Spirit so that we can be inspired by your word. Lord God, we ask that you bless us today and fill us with your Holy Spirit, with your amazing presence. Through Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. Now before we jump into our scripture, I need to tell you about an article that I read last week by a man named Jay Hendricks called How to Teach a child to argue. Now the title of the article intrigued me right away, and the first thought in my mind was, why in the world would I ever want to teach my child to argue? Seriously, I'm sure she's going to argue with me enough when she gets older. I don't think I really want to teach her how to do that. But I read the article, and I found it quite interesting. I found it so interesting that there are copies in the back of the sanctuary in case if anyone else would like to take it and give it a read. Well, in this article, the author, a man named Jay, tells stories about him teaching his children how to argue. And he tells one story that I want to share with you today about when he tells or teaches his seven-year-old son how to argue and when his seven-year-old son actually wins an argument against him. Now, the situation is this. His seven-year-old son's name is George. And it's the middle of the winter, and George wants to wear shorts to school. So they find themselves in the middle of an argument. I promise we'll get to our scripture. This is just the preface to it. Uh, so he finds himself in the middle of, of an argument with his seven-year-old son who insists on wearing shorts to school in the middle of winter. So Jay, the dad, Jay's first response to his son is, no, you cannot wear shorts to school in the middle of the winter. And the reason is because I'm your father and I told you so. He tried that. Now think, he's taught his son how to argue, and his son just looks at him completely unconvinced. So then Jay tries a different technique. He says, okay, well you have to wear pants to school, you can't wear shorts, because if you wear shorts to school in the middle of winter, your legs are going to get all cold and chapped. Pretty good argument. But his son, George, just looks at him, still unconvinced. So Jay tries another technique, and he rolls up his pants, since he's wearing work pants, he rolls up his pants so that his legs are showing, so it looks like he's wearing shorts, and he goes, don't that look stupid? And George says, yes. <laughs> and then he goes, well, why would you still want to wear shorts to school? And George goes, because I don't look stupid, and they're my legs, and I don't care if they get chapped. Now, at that moment, Jay realized that he lost the argument to his seven-year-old son. His son was willing to take the consequences, and it was his body, so really he is the one who had the right to do whatever he wanted to do. So Jay conceded to the argument, and he made a deal with his son. He said, okay, if you wear snow pants over your shorts when you're outside, and if I get an okay with the principal, then yes, you can wear shorts to school in the middle of winter. George was pretty happy. He won that argument against his dad. Now, since you have not read this article yet, you're probably wondering why any parent would ever want to teach their child how to argue. Well, the reason why is because he has taught his kids not just how to argue, but how to reason and debate. And in doing that, he taught his kids at a young age that it is never acceptable to throw a temper tantrum. Who would like to, to teach their kids that? Seriously, he taught them that a temper tantrum is not a way to win an argument. He's also taught his kids that sometimes they lose and sometimes they win. And he's taught his kids that unlike the rest of the world, in their house, it is never okay to be passive aggressive. Now I have to tell you that I think his kids are going to grow up to be pretty impressive adults able to really contribute to society. But before we get ahead of ourselves, I want us to, to really think about our scriptures. I want you to have this story in your mind as we think again.
again about our scripture. Think about an adult man and his seven-year-old son having an argument, and the seven-year-old son winning the argument. Have that picture in your head. And now we're going to walk through our scripture story once again. So Jesus goes to the place called Tyre, a region that's now in the south of Lebanon. It's many miles north of Jerusalem, and he goes there to get away from everyone else. It's at the point in Jesus' ministry where he can't walk ten feet without people just swarming around him. And so he goes to escape from everyone else. He goes to get away, to clear his head. He doesn't want to be healing people for just ten minutes. He just wants time to himself. So he travels north. He travels far north. But the second that word gets out that Jesus has entered the region of Tyre, this one woman, this one woman who we find out was not a Jew, but was a Gentile, comes and follows Jesus and goes to the house where he is staying and begs him mercilessly to heal her daughter. But when she asked Jesus to heal her daughter, what does Jesus say? Does Jesus just say yes? No. We're responsive here, remember? We can do this. Does Jesus say yes? No. 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 He doesn't say yes. Instead, he looks at her and he says, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and to throw it to the dogs. Does that sound harsh to you? It sounded yes. harsh to her, too. It really did. Now, I know we'll get into this a little bit more, but it really was a harsh statement. Jesus is equating the Jewish people with children and the Gentile people with dogs. Even worse, he is equating her with a dog. But before we put judgment on Jesus, let's slow ourselves down for a second. Before we judge Jesus for why he said such things, let's think that maybe there was a method to his madness. Now, what does the woman do in response? Does she throw a temper tantrum or pout or, or run away? No. What does she do? She puts up an argument. She puts up a valid argument just like our seven-year-old boy did with his father. She doesn't run away. She doesn't yell at Jesus. Instead, she looks at Jesus and she talks with him. She argues with him with a logical debate. The woman turns to Jesus and says, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs under the table get to eat the children's crumbs. Now that's a pretty good argument. You gotta think she's they're talking in metaphor here, and she says, Yeah, sure, the dogs don't just get to eat all the food. It's gotta go to the children's first. But still, the dogs, when they're underneath the table, they get to eat all the crumbs that the, that the children drop. And therefore, she should be able to get the grace and the mercy that Jesus has to offer. She has a pretty good argument. And so Jesus looks at her, and I just imagine that Jesus looks at her proudly because she has just, for the first time in the entire New Testament, won an argument against Jesus. I imagine that he looks at her proudly and he says, For such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your dog. Now, does Jesus argue a lot in the New Testament? Think about all those Pharisees and everything. He does. They argue with him. Oh, he has a lot of arguments. And does Jesus usually win? He always wins. Jesus always wins every single argument, except for here and this situation he lets this woman win the argument. Now many people rightfully ask me, why in the world did Jesus do this? Why in the world did Jesus say such harsh words to this woman? I mean seriously, he called her a dog. He was mean to her. Why in the world would he do such a thing? And truth be told, I cannot give you the right answer. I can tell you that yes, maybe he knew that she would have a good comeback. Maybe he knew that, that he was going to make some sort of theological distinction between the Jews and the Gentiles. Maybe he was even testing her to ensure that she had strong enough faith worthy of him healing her daughter. But I don't know. None of us know. None of us know exactly why Jesus said what he did. But we do know some more things. We do know what we can find in these verses. We do know that, cha that Jesus challenges her. For some reason, unbeknownst to us, Jesus challenges this Gentile 
woman. He even offends her. And we know that she does not cower. She does not pout. She stands strong and she argues with the Lord. Would you have enough courage to argue with the Lord? Seriously. Think about it. Picture yourself now face to face with Jesus. Would you have the courage to argue with the Lord? I even try and think about George and his dad, Jay. When I was seven years old, I would not have any courage to argue with my parents. Think about that. To put up a valid argument, I would have thrown a temper tantrum, I'm sure, but there is no way that I would have argued with my parents. And there's no way if I were face to face with Jesus, do I think I would have the courage to argue with him. But she does. And Jesus concedes to her argument. Friends, this is not your typical gospel story. And you know that I've told you so many times before that any time we find a woman in the Bible, we need to pay attention. Because they are few and far between. And believe me, it is not often that we find a woman in the Bible. We don't even get to know her name because the authors did not find it very important. We don't know her name, but she's in the Bible here. She's in this story. So we need to pay serious attention. And you know that I don't believe in coincidences. I know I've said it so many times before, but I in no way believe in coincidences. I'm one of those people. And here you can see me last week. I'm reading this article that my husband forwards to me about this boy and his dad and, and teaching children how to argue. And I'm praying over scripture. And what scripture do I come across? I come across the only scripture in the Bible where Jesus loses an argument. So I'm thinking that seriously this is not a coincidence at all, but I'm thinking that God wants to teach us something. I love when coincidences like this happen because it means that God wants to teach us a lesson. God's trying to teach us how to have good, fruitful, productive conversations. God's trying to teach us not to be afraid to disagree with one another. It's okay if we disagree with one another. If nobody ever disagreed, this world would be one, one really boring place. But when we disagree with one another, we cannot cower, we cannot cow, we cannot put up a temper tantrum. We need to talk to each other face to face. God's trying to teach us also some valuable lessons. And this one lesson is that I think God is trying to teach us that it's never okay to be passive aggressive. Jay, one of his favorite things that he's teaching his kids is that although the world thinks it's okay, in his house it's not okay to be passive aggressive. And I think God wants us to know that in God's house it's never okay to be passive aggressive. And friends, God's also trying to teach us one very important thing. I truly believe that God wants us to learn that it is okay to argue with God. Think about it. Have you ever been angry at God before? Honestly. Ever been angry with God before? Have you ever had the courage to argue with God? I will tell you there is one time one time in my life that I actually had the courage to argue with God. And you know what? I got an answer. I got an answer. I was so mad at God for something that I actually did once have the courage to argue with God. And I got an answer. And I truly think that if this woman was able to argue with Jesus, that God wants us to know that sometimes, yes, sometimes it is okay to argue with God. Sure, 99% of the time, we're going to lose. 99% of the time, we can try and argue with God and we're going to lose because God always knows best. But 1% of the time, on every rare occasion, if we put up a good argument with God, then maybe, just maybe, God is going to grant our request. Now think about it. Is God able to cure this woman's daughter? Let's ask that again. Is God able to cure this woman's daughter in her Bible? Yes. yes. Let's think about the Old Testament. Let's think about Job. He's one of the only other people that argues with God. Is God able to recover all of Job's losses? Yeah, and then some. Yes, and he can't bring back his dead family members, but he recovers everything else and he gives them even more. Now, when we are in need, when we have been searching for a job for God knows how long, is God able to find us a job when we're in need? Somehow, some way, I don't know how, but God 
is able. When we are so stressed out that we don't know what to do with our life, is God able to give us the guidance that we need? Yes. Friends, God is able. God is always able to provide for our needs. And when we have the courage to argue with God, I think that just like this woman, just like this woman here, God is so thankful that our faith is so strong that we are willing to rely on the Almighty Lord for all of our needs. This is the second time in the Gospels that Jesus tells us that it is okay to pester God when we need something. He tells us a story about a woman and an unjust judge, and he says, how much more if we beg relentlessly will God give us what we need? This is a hard time right now for many of us. This is a hard time for people in our church. This is a hard time for people that we encounter out of our church. And believe me, somehow, some way, if we are ready to come to God and pester God and argue with God, then God will give us what we need. Because God is not going to smite us for being angry that our lives are not doing so well. God is merciful and loving. God is our loving Father, teaching us new lessons every single day and willing to let us argue with Him. God is good all the time. Do you know that? In order for us to start this new Sunday school year, we as adults need to learn something too. We need to be ready to learn. Do we know that God is good? Friends, God is good. All the time. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Now, if we can learn anything from this, let it be that it's okay to argue with one another. And friends, when you need to, it's okay to argue with God. And let's join in a moment of prayer. <laughs> Gracious God, we come to you today. We are in need of your presence, we are in need of your, in need of your healing, we are in need of your love. But Lord God, you can provide. Only you can provide. Lord God, just like that Syrophoenician woman, we come to you in need. We come to you in need and we don't pout and we don't throw a temper tantrum, we don't run away. Instead, we come to you and we beg that you give us what we need. So, Lord God, there are many of us in need today, and I ask that you bless them. I ask that you hear their arguments. I ask that you come to them, and I ask that you concede so that they can have the needs that they are asking for. Lord God, I ask that you bless every single one of us abundantly so that we can care for those around us. Lord God, I ask that you are with us, that you teach us how to be good humans, good adults who can have conversations with one another. And I ask that you give us the courage to stand up and to argue with you when we are feeling lost. Lord God, please bless us today. Bless us today and bless us every single day of our lives and please be with Jerry. He needs you now. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us in. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. 